Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. I had a power session discovery call recently, and I wanted to share something with you because I took a big lesson away from it in terms of simplifying and drawing boundaries around an offer and things like that. And specifically what came out of it is an entirely new framework that I am obsessed with. I'm basically obsessed with this. And it could end up with variations on it. But you know what? When one of those things happens where you just get this idea and you're like, oh my God, I finally figured out how to draw this into a framework. I finally figured out how to turn this into a message. And then your kind of brand, branding hat goes on and you start going, oh, like how do I word this? How do I make it sound clever and fancy? I don't care about any of that today. I just wanted to get on the mic and tell you about this. <laughs> it's going to get fancier. I have no doubt. I have a team around me that's going to help me make this fancy. But for the time being, I want to tell you about this revelation I had around financial focus. And it stemmed from this conversation with this prospect because they were telling me about their business and going on, you know, different paths and tangents down, you know, oh, when I need this, oh, when I need this too, like I need to work on my cash flow, but I don't even know how profitable I am in my offer. And I need to figure out tax planning. And oh, I also don't really know how much it costs to acquire a client. So I have no idea how much my clients are worth. And I have no idea how to measure like revenue growth or what KPIs and metrics I need. And it was just like, I need everything. And and one thing about power sessions, this person was looking for a power session. I said, you know what? Here's what's tricky about power sessions. And I used this on the call with them. And I didn't realize how good of an analogy this was. But I said, when I offer up a power session and all of these options of what you can do in it, it's not a buffet, but it is an a la carte menu. And you can't have a little piece of everything. We have to just enjoy and savor and finish one dish at a time entirely. Because if you start to mix the flavor profiles, if you're throwing, I mean, anyone else like this, what popped up in my head was like the salad bar at Pizza Hut <laughs> or like, or going to like CC's Pizza or something like that. It's like you get a little bit of everything. And then eventually you realize that when you, as you stuff the plate, you threw like a hamburger and like an Asian noodle dish and, you know, a taco all on the same plate. And you're like, I don't enjoy any of these nearly as much because all the flavors are clashing. Now, as an analogy, that works because you can't really get a lot done in my power session or in most, with most financial professionals, you can't get all of this done in one little plate. You're not going to cram it all in. And if you do, it's not going to taste good. So what I would do is really focus on one area at a time and master it to make sure that you've got everything under control and that you're ready to move on to the next stage. And it, it, it really is a layering. So I came up with this kind of financial priority formula to go from, you know, the most basic of the financial measurements that are health indicators to the nice to haves in the world. Like if you're already stable, secure, and healthy, now we can focus on this, which is more of like the aesthetic, if you will. So working from the inside out. And what's exciting about this framework is that I, I fundamentally to my core believe it. And it does work. And I've actually discussed it with clients and I've discussed it with my team and I showed it to my team and they're like, oh my God, how is like this not taught in school now? You know, when we teach financial statements or we teach these different things, like the fundamental health of a business starts like this. So without further ado, I'm going to break this down for you. It's really seven layers of discussing financial focus in your business. And it's not just metrics. <laughs> Don't worry. Revenue is not in here, by the way. So buckle up. <laughs> if you're expecting revenue to be number one, sorry. But I want to break this down for you that, and this goes in order one through seven, the order of things you should focus on. 
And yes, to not be hyperbolic and like extreme, yes, you should focus on all of these to some degree at the same time. However, one of them should probably be your major or one of them should become basically your obsession at a time. Starting with number one, your gross margin. The most underrated <laughs> metric, an underappreciated metric. Y'all are starting at the bookends of the p and You look at the revenue, you're looking at the profit. Not paying attention to the gross margin, the gross profit. Let me break that down for you. If you don't know what gross profit is the core profitability, the I, I just call it like the stripped down profitability of your actual offer, not of your company, but of your offer. What is the difference? Let me explain. So let's use an e-commerce business, for example. I have one of those in my portfolio here of clients. So we have an e-commerce business. They sell clothing. The, the gross margin is the price of the clothing online minus the cost to make the clothing and ship it to the customer. Simple. At the core, are you making more money in your price from your customer than it fundamentally costs you to deliver that product or service? Now, if you run a service-based business, this is a little trickier and a little bit more subjective because when it comes to cost of goods, super easy to figure out like oh, how much it costs to make a shirt and ship it. Like we can figure that out. You know, it's pretty simple. Maybe not easy, but simple. But when it comes to services, it's like, well, I run a consulting practice. So how would I figure out my cost of service? Well, I figure out typically payroll for the person that's going to serve them, labor cost. I look at maybe even software costs that are directly related to the client. I look at other things like the payment processing fees for their invoices. I look at any other direct costs that are associated with serving them. So it may actually be a really high gross margin business, and that's okay. So think about services are generally higher gross margin, I would say, on average, again, at the gross level, depending on what type of industry you're in. What good looks like for a gross margin is going to depend heavily on the industry, the market, the geography, and all those things. So understand that what good looks like is going to be very subjective. But one thing you can do is you could construct your gross margin every month for the last, say, 13 months. And I'll tell you why 13 in a second. 13 months would give you perspective on not only the last year, but then you can compare. If right now I'm recording this in August, so August 2024 to August 2023, you know, and you can see, oh, here's what it looked like last year at this time of year. Here's what the snapshot looked like for this month. And you can do a comparison side by side. So that's one thing you might want to look into. So when we look at gross margin, we're talking about core profitability. We're talking about at the end of the day, are you making money simply by making your product or service? I think that's clear. And if that doesn't work, if you're not gro- you don't have a gross margin that's positive on all of your offers, and this is the key, not just across the board. This is a massive mistake people are making in their bookkeeping. Massive mistake. Now, Your bookkeeping might include QuickBooks, and it's not always worth dividing this up in QuickBooks. Let me be clear. If you have something like a Shopify, if you have something like a Squarespace, if you can go in and you can see your different products and you can see the gross margin per type of product per SKU, then you want to be looking at that. You want to be looking at making sure you understand which offers are profitable. So we have to know which offers are profitable if they're not all profitable at the same level which ones are more profitable than others, which ones should you probably let go of altogether and just nix, and then which ones should you be focusing on and marketing more. All of that can be gleaned by a good profitability study. And that's usually the first layer that we unwrap in a power session is first understanding what is your gross margin across your company and per SKU? What do your offers look like? What does your pricing look like? And is all of that looking healthy? That is number one. Now, I'm going to get into, in the future episodes, all of the other metrics that I think are to be uncovered, and I think it's going to be a really fun ride. So stay tuned. They're going to be scattered throughout the coming weeks, but we're going to be talking about each individual metric and why it matters so much in your business. So again, number one, gross margin. And if you can, and this is why I scattered them, I'm giving you some time. 
to go implement this, to go look at the gross margin in your business, to start computing it, to start thinking about that and to start actually unwrapping this for your own business. So we can go on to the next one in just a few days and be able to leverage what you've learned from this one for your own business to go to the next step. So tune in and stick with me. I promise we're going to go through all of the seven different layers that I uncovered in this framework. Hey, small business owners, are you tired of juggling payroll benefits and HR tasks? If so, I want to introduce you to our payroll provider of choice, Gusto, the number one rated HR and payroll platform trusted by thousands of businesses just like yours. With Gusto, you can streamline payroll, manage benefits, and more all in one easy to use platform. But here's the kicker. When you sign up and run your first payroll through our special link below in the show notes, you'll score a sweet deal, a $100 Visa gift card. That's right just a hundred dollars for clicking the link below and get started to claim your reward. Don't let payroll headaches hold you back from building your team and growing your business. Join the Gusto family today and take the first step towards simplifying your HR processes while snagging a bonus along the way. Click the link in the show notes now to learn more and set up your payroll. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.